This is a real quick video looking at the new Zune software and Zune firmware. Uh, the reason why I'm looking at Zune is because as a, a Zune version 1 owner I've been frustrated with the lack of integration between Media Center and the Zune player itself. In fact, there wasn't any integration and getting TV content onto Zune through a variety of third party software uh, was a bit of a nightmare and I found most of the time it didn't work. So what I'm going to do is have a quick look at the, the Zune software. Uh, there's plenty of websites and zoomthoughts.com do some great video reviews of that. But what I'm going to look at specifically is the, is the getting TV content onto there. So let me start by loading up the Zune software. And it's got a much nicer, cleaner user interface than the, the previous Zune software. And I can easily find my artists and fan art music. And actually, I'm going to try giving this a go and using this as my, as my mini player because it's, uh, it's got quite a nice interface. Of course, the podcast uh, features. Um, as a podcaster are really great because you can see I can subscribe to the Media Center show and I've got all my sync options so I can uh, subscribe so I want uh, new shows going over and uh, it's just a case of adding the RSS feed so if you're using the, you can get the, this video show, you can get the Media Center show or the podcast on there, so that's great. Now let's have a look at videos and I've got a lot of videos on here now my first comment on this is that they're all mixed up. Now I can sort by name, sort by date added, that was it. But what you've got mixed up here now is videos and record TV. Uh, so it's not like Media Center where they're split up. And there you go, so you can see you've got all the kids, Power Rangers, and, and then right the way down to recorded TV. So I'm going to pick a uh, recorded TV show. Let me find something that's not going to be too big. Here we've got the the gadget show guest on the show, Jason Bradbury, previous shows. So this is an hour show. So actually, I'm not going to pick that one, and I'm going to find a um, nice short clip. Okay, this show here. So if I, it's called Backwards, and have a look at that. Um, hopefully you can see this, uh, but that is um, 7 or 4 by 480, 7, uh, 7 meg, uh, 22 minutes, so that's ideal. So what I'm going to do is sync this with e &D, which is my zoom, and away it goes. Now the first thing you'll notice down here is CPU usage has gone up. Why it does the transcoding. Actually, this is remarkably quick compared to the machine that I was trying it on today. So let's see how that's going. That's 68 percent, 70 percent, 80 percent, 87 percent. I found today it took about two hours on the machine I was using, so that's interesting to see that this is a lot quicker. So we're going to see if that works now. Okay, so that seems to have copied it over. Let's just double check. See, that says it's converting. So while it does say it's 100%, um, I don't think it has actually converted it yet. And if we go back to the CPU monitor, you can see there it's running 100%. So I suspect we may have to wait for this now. Now earlier when I, today when I was trying this, the progress meter uh, just gradually increased over the, the time that it took to do the recording. So it's strange to see that uh, this has gone to 100% and then waited so uh, I can see it's actually doing some other stuff as well uh, it's because oh, there we go it's gone back 98% now I think this is partly because I've only just connected the zoom after I updated the, the software so and what I'm going to do now is pause the video and come back when it actually has completed it just took over uh, over 10 minutes to do that 
What I found today on a Pentium 4 one gig machine, it took about an hour to do a two and a half hour film. So it's not too bad, but it's not something you can just do with the spur, spur of the moment. So that's done the, the syncing up now with the zoom. So I'm going to disconnect the zoom now and let's go have a look at this. So this is the new user interface of the zoom. So I'm going to go to videos. And in there now you can see there's a couple of um, videos I had on already. This one is actually a DVD that I converted over. Uh, I've got some holiday ones and then the film I mentioned before, the day after tomorrow. You can see there. Uh, an audio file which I'll come back to in a moment. And the History of the World Backwards is a comedy show from BBC. So you get the metadata that's come through. You can play that. And there we go. So you can see that, and I'll try and keep still so that you can it can get a chance to zoom in. There it goes. So it's normal recorded TV. So we can uh, fast forward it. I press the centre button there, get info. Let's just flick, flick it forward a bit more. So that's recorded TV straight onto the onto there. Uh, if I go off and uh, do something else go back to a film I can resume that film the day after tomorrow and they are recorded straight off, off TV as well so it's got the resume function which is exactly what you want so that's recorded TV on there I mentioned about the audio this file here, this Genesis one is a DBT radio file and that, if you've not seen that before is a BBC radio that's a, a, a TV channel on the digital terrestrial signal in the UK so there's um, no picture it's just the audio and if I try and play that it does try and play it uh, but there's no audio that comes out of it when I connect up the headphones uh, which is a shame that because you can kind of use that as a podcast uh, then of that audio show but maybe that's something I can look at on my machine so that's video t on TV on uh, the new Zoom software. So that was a quick look at TV support on the new Zoom. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around on the digital lifestyle.com.